Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today is Monday and this is a day that I normally take to photograph all of the pictures for the things that I will be posting on Poshmark throughout the week. So I thought it'd be a great idea to film the process and show you the behind the scenes and give you some Poshmark photography tips along the way. I have several shoes I have to take pictures of, handbags, hats, and a lot of jeans. So I'm gonna be showing you how I measure everything, the equipment and supplies that I use to take good pictures for Poshmark and just share as many tips as I can along the way to make things easier, faster, and better for you. So let me show you what I have going on right here. First, I'm going to go over some of the supplies you may need to take pictures for Poshmark, some of the things I've got here, and then we'll get into the setup and how the whole process works and start sharing the tips. This is what the room looks like the day that I'm taking pictures for Poshmark. It just gets taken over completely with my whole setup. Here on top of my desk, I have this Elmer's Glue White Poster Display Board. I like this one better because it's white on both sides. So once this top gets a little bit dirty, I can flip it over and use the other side. This camera I haven't really been using to take pictures. I just find it a lot easier to use my phone and then send over the pictures to my computer to post. Here I have this steamer, which I use to kind of get the clothes looking a little bit nice. And here, of course, we have this light fixture that I use sometimes, but it's a little bit sunny out as you can see. So that usually provides plenty of light but sometimes i will use this here i have some goo gone that i use to clean up the shoes to photograph them here i have some what is this called wrapping paper which i'll show you the usefulness of this in a moment just so you know any of the products that i'm sharing with you right now are going to be linked down in the description they are going to be affiliate links, so I get commissions on anything you purchase, but it doesn't cost you anything extra and you'll be supporting this channel. So thank you in advance if you use those affiliate links down in the description. Here I have some disinfecting wipes, which I've already wiped down all the shoes and everything, but just in case I have them close to me, in case I need them as I'm taking pictures. Then I have this measuring tape because I'm going to be taking pictures of measurements of the clothing. I have scissors just so that I can get rid of any little strings that are hanging off clothes. I have a lint roller near me as well. Some water because I do get thirsty. And I think that's all for the supplies. Oh, except these hangers. So this clear hanger here, I use it for t-shirts, which I won't be photographing t-shirts today, but I just wanted to show you. These are better because they don't show too much in the pictures. And then for pants, I use this white hanger here. I've been taking pictures of the jeans hanging up and then also on this white board when I'm taking measurements. Now let me explain more the setup. So here I have my bags ready to go for when I'm ready to picture those. I have these hats, which by the way, I made a haul about all of this recently, so you should be able to find it on my channel. I will link it in a card up above. But down here I have the shoes ready to go and I have already stuffed them with this brown paper and ideally I like to do this the night before I'm going to take pictures just so that they hold their form better. So I put all of this in here that way when I'm taking the pictures they look nice and not all smushed if you know what I'm saying. And then after I take the picture, I put these back in and store them that way just so they can continue to hold their shape. So that's what I use that wrapping paper for that I showed you earlier. And I have all the shoes ready to go here. And my desk rolling chair I use to hold clothing items. So I steamed these jeans somewhat just to make them look decent, just so they're easy to get to as I'm taking pictures. Then of course, I already showed you here on top of my desk, I have this board. And the purpose behind this is that I take the picture of the jeans on this hanger from the front, from the back, and pictures of any details. But then I move these jeans over to this whiteboard when I'm going to take the measurements of the waist, the length, the pant legs, and all of that. And here I have this basket ready to go so that I can put my items in once I'm done taking the pictures. And of course, I have all of these things here, easy access in case I need them. So once again, the whole process works like take the picture of the front and the back, 
put it here, take the measurements and put it there once it's done. That's the system I have going on right now and I find that setting up things like this ready on hand just makes it easier to get through all of the pictures. And of course we must change our picture settings to a one by one ratio just so it can be already in this square format because that's the only format that Poshmark accepts. If you take a long full length photo, it's gonna crop it weirdly for you. So just to make things easier, put it in a one by one ratio as it shows there. And then also before I would just snap pictures however they came out and worried about cropping and fixing them later. But I have found that if you take the time to kind of center it in the middle of the square, it makes it a lot easier and a lot faster to edit and post your pictures afterwards. So don't just snap the picture however. Take care that it's in the center and that it covers most of the square so that you don't have a lot of empty space and you can see the full length of the item. I am going to be explaining the entire process that I use to take the pictures of jeans to post on Poshmark, but I wanted to explain the whole lighting situation. Right here, I am just going to be using the natural light that's coming in through the big window that's in my room. Sometimes the sun does go in and that's when I will use the light that I showed you earlier. And also later on in the video, I'm going to be sharing with you the apps that I use to get that crystal white background on the back of my cover photos. After making sure that the item looks nice and clean, I step all the way back to get a full length picture of the jeans. Slowly I make my way forward. I take a picture of the top half in a close up form. I take pictures of the bottom half and any distinct details that the jeans may have. Then I turn the jeans around and do the same thing all over again. Picture of the full length, the top half, bottom half and any details that there may be on the back pockets of the jeans or anything like that. From there I take the jeans over to my desk where I have the whiteboard set up and from here I proceed to take pictures of the size tags, brand or care tags that are on the jeans. Here I also take a measurement of the waist and take a picture of it. I take a picture of the length of the jeans as well and I put those up on Poshmark. I don't worry about listing measurements in my description. I just let the picture speak for themselves. I find it much easier that way. Also that lets them know exactly how I measured the items. From here, I fold up the jeans nicely and I take the measurement of the pant leg. In this stage, I also take advantage to take a quick picture of the pants laid out like this, just to have another extra photo. From here, I just fold up the pants and put them inside the basket. Then we just keep it moving, doing the same exact process with the rest of the jeans, taking the pictures in the same angles and taking it through the similar assembly line process kind of thing. And this makes the picture taking process go a lot more smoother and a lot faster as well. I do change up things here and there when I learn new ways to do things, but for the most part, the system stays pretty similar every time. And I highly encourage you to do the same. Look at other YouTube videos, look at pictures on Poshmark and figure out what's your favorite way to take cover photos. What are your favorite angles to take pictures of things and develop a system that works for you that you can use every single time to make things go fast and smooth. Okay, on to the shoe situation. I am going to be using this white cardboard box, but I want it to stay standing up like this just so that I can photograph the shoes in front of it and I can have a white background all around. To make it stand up, I'm just gonna add this bookcase holder thing right behind it. And that'll make it stand straight up. And now I can easily photograph my shoes right in front of it without having to worry about my background. It's just all white, nice, clear, simple. And then for shoes that are tall like boots, I found that this setup works better. I have the board standing straight up 
it's on top of my white desk so that gives me the all-around white effect that I want as I'm taking the pictures it's pretty much the same thing as with the jeans the type of shots I get are similar most of the time just to keep it easier when you do the same thing over and over it just makes it faster than trying to figure out different shots every time so my shots are always the bottom of the shoes first then I place them down and we do behind the shoe then we do over the top of the shoe just so they can see the insoles then we this flat lay going one way then the flat lay going the other way the front of the shoe the shoe label and size which in this case it looks just like this and then after that I take care of getting a cover shot most of the time I would do my cover shot something like this making one shoe the center of focus and one towards the back just to show a bit of detail and also making sure that the shoe covers the entire square right now i'm filming long ways in a full screen but when you are taking pictures of course it's a square so making sure that the entire shoe fits the entire square just to show the entire shoe however lately for cover shots for shoes i've been experimenting with this method holding the shoe up with my hand and once I edit the photo my hand kind of gets cropped out you can see a bit of it but not as much I kind of hold it up to the camera make sure it covers the whole square and then I adjust the back shoe so that you can see some of the detailing so something like this may work nice and as I said my hand will get cropped out a bit and erased a little bit when I edit the cover photo but this is what I'm kind of experimenting with. Still something I'm trying to perfect, but just thought I'd show you. But either cover photo works. Aside from those general shots of shoes, if the shoes have um, detailing like these do here, then I will take pictures of those. And if they have a heel, of course, I will take a picture of the measuring tape on top of the heel just so they can know how I'm measuring it and how tall the heel is. Now, of course, for these shoes where we put the paper inside them now would be the time to take it out this was just to sort of make it hold its form a bit so that we can get a good picture of how it looks you see so the strap thing is hold up a little bit and so is this which is much better than it sinking down I don't normally do this but I'm going to measure the footbed for this shoe so I just have a piece of tape on the back of this measuring tape I taped it to the very tip of the shoe and I'm just gonna flatten it as it goes down and kind of measure how many inches it is because sometimes I do get that question so I'm gonna start doing that for shoes that are easy to do this with or purses I'm still finding out the best way to photograph these for now I'm using this display board that I use for the shoes I also put it on the wall here and took pictures of the front and the back while it was hanging on the wall and I'm just going to see what's best and inside we have paper that wrapping paper I showed you earlier just so that it can be a little fluffy while I'm taking the pictures I took pictures of some measurements the length the width I'll insert pictures here just so you can see better but the last thing I will do is just take pictures of the inside I will take this paper out take pictures of what the inside lining looks like and any pockets that it may have the final thing I want to talk about when it comes to taking pictures for Poshmark are some editing apps I'm going to show you a couple of apps that you could use to get that crystal white background on your pictures. The first one is this remove.bg. You can find it in your app store. And to use that one, all I have to do is go to my gallery, pick the picture that I want the crystal white background for. So I'm just going to choose the cover shot. That's the only one that I apply the clear white background for. Only the cover shot. I don't do it on all of them. Then I'm going to click the share button at the bottom. That's going to bring up the apps that I can share to. I'm going to share to that remove.bg app. And automatically it removes the background. But if I want to add a white background instead, I'm going to click that edit button at the top right. And down here it gives me background options. The very last one is colors. So I'm going to go with the white one. And there we go. That's the plain white background. And then I can just 
go to download download again and it will save it to my gallery in a folder called remove.bg the second app that works really well is called photo fuse and that's this one with a pink circle this is the one i used before i started using remove.bg and this is what the pictures look like here you can see they have the clear white background to use this one, you just log into the app, create your account, then click the plus button with the camera at the bottom. Tap on photos and click on the photo that you want to remove the background from and add the white. On this, we're just going to hover over the hat and we're going to color it in with this yellow highlighter. And once it's all covered, it doesn't have to be perfect, for, but for the most part, have the whole item covered. You click finish and it will start working on making the background completely white for you. Once it's done, it will be here on your sort of photo dashboard. It'll say new on top. You tap on it and you click save on the bottom or you can click edit right next to it. If you want, if you didn't like the way the picture turned out, you can edit it to highlight it different. Once you click save, if I click this back arrow on top, now it'll say saved instead of new. And again, it will save in your gallery in a folder called Photo Fuse. I'm going to wrap up this video just so that I can hurry up and finish photographing the rest of the shoes, the handbags, and the hats. I hope this wasn't all over the place and that you were able to gain some tips on how to implement some of these things into your process to make things faster. Let me know which of the tips that you learned today will you be using. And if you have any to share with us, make sure to drop those in the comments as well. Don't forget to leave your closet, your Poshmark closet link down in the description. Mine will be down there as well. Thank you for stopping by my channel today. I hope you have an amazing Go Crushing Week.